In today's society, we are surrounded by smart and intelligent technologies. The automobile industry is no different, with many companies trying to figure out how smart systems will figure in the driving experience. Behind me on this screen is a live map of the more than 1.8 million drivers who are currently using Geely's in-car smart software. But how does this improve being behind the wheel? And how does this factor into the driving experience? Today we are here at eCarX to speak to the CEO, Mr. Shen Ziyu, to answer some of our questions. So uh, to begin, we need to know where we're going. So uh, would you be able to show us the uh, GPS function on, on your system here? Yeah, you've got GPS function. Yeah. We're going to the Sheraton, I believe. So um, could you uh, talk to the machine and tell, us, tell it where we're going? Yeah, sure. So um, we call that uh, the AI assistant. So that's uh, like Google AI assistant. Mm -hmm. Because in Google, you say, hey, Google, blah, 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 blah. So we, we develop similar things like that. Hi, Link. Okay, okay, so what's, what's just happened just then? Yeah, you see, that's a different routing. And you see, okay, if we go this nice row, so we just picked here. Sure, so yeah. we, just, we just spoke to uh, the in car system and we told it where we want to go, and it's given us the fastest route to get there, right? Yeah, so we want to one assistant around you in the car. Great, let's go. Yeah. So uh, obviously uh, a company like Geely is a lot younger than some uh, American and European brands yeah. and they kind of developed this, this info in car uh, system from much, uh, from much earlier. So they started with the buttons and this kind of like very yeah. uh, rudimentary system. But uh, Geely entered into this era quite late. So I believe the first infotainment systems were fitted with 4G. Is that correct? Correct. 4G. So they missed out on the ADSL, kind of like the slower internet speeds, and now yep. they already are fitted with, uh, with 4, 4G, right? GD started um, connectivity strategy uh, since 2040 at that moment. So uh, started from WCDMA, 3G, and then 4G. At the beginning, 3G, not every car embedded, just some high-end car at that time. So but 4G, uh, after 2016, eCar X built up, we build a team, we build a product. Then, uh, GD Group decided every car in better 4G, in better 4G, because we found only 4G can provide you as much as possible the content and also the big brain in the cloud. So that's what we think. Hmm. And uh, now the uh, 5G is becoming more commonplace all over the world. Yeah. How is this going to uh, affect things inside the car? Okay, so that will bring a lot of new feature. Yeah, in the car. Um, for example, V2X feature. That's especially from 5G. The 4G, they don't have V2X function. So, so V2X, v v vehicle to infrastructure, vehicle to vehicle. Yeah, a lot of interesting feature we develop on that protocol. Yeah. So this this stands to take driver driver safety to kind of like the next next level, right? All yeah, these yeah, kind yeah. of intercommunicating yeah. devices in the environment. Yeah. Yeah, but from driver point of view, so you have sensor that from your eye, right? So you can look at you can look at everywhere, but only this range. But the V2X, he will tell you maybe very far away the area. Hey over there so some problem pop up you need a you need a turn right right now yeah sure. um, now that you mentioned about this kind of uh, the mobile kind of uh, differences between the info infotainment or the quite in-car systems and mobiles a lot of people have been saying um, okay. why do we need this if we can just use a phone okay so that, that, that that's that's insight okay sure. so everybody have everybody has 24 hour one day very fair mm -hmm. so most of the time you are using smartphone okay so if you're in the car if you drive of course you can pull full in phone here no problem but some feature will be influenced and different for example this navigation we already integrated 
with vehicle speed, other sensors. So if you go tunnel or maybe other area, still you have GPS, you know the direction. But the phone, if you're in the tunnel, will lose direction. Uh, also another reason, because phone safety, if you're putting phone here, so screen very small, uh, you cannot easily find uh, your target. So that's why we think voice AI assistant, we can just talking machine, wherever you want, let him offer you. There's an assistant behind that. Yeah, so that's our insight. So of course, you can see this navigation from AutoNavi. So also you can use AutoNavi app on the phone. So if you log in the system, same ID, you will find your history from phone synchronized in the system here. So for example, your home address, your company address in the system. So the idea is it to be, it's complementary to the phone. It's not supposed to, one is not supposed to replace the other. They're supposed to work together, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I actually wanted to, I actually feel a little bit cold at the moment. Is it possible to uh, increase the temperature a bit yeah, sure. by speaking to the uh, the interface here? Yeah, sure. How can we do that? Yeah, you're just talking machine it's called AI assistant. You have to say, hey, Linko, and um, I feel cold. Can we do, can we do it now, just yeah. real quick? Hi, Linko. Okay. So, I feel cold. Yeah, you see. So this is this is actually very interesting. This is actually like fuzzy commands, right? Yeah. Because you didn't you didn't actually directly ask it to increase the temperature. Yeah. Okay. Of course, you can ask him to increase temperature, but of course, you can say, "I feel cold. I feel warm." But this is part of the. Ask you. This is part of the. This is what you mentioned before about it being a brain because it can actually think a little bit for itself. Yeah. You say, "I'm cold." It figures out it needs to increase the temperature, right? Exactly. So we call that a natural language understanding. So as you probably know, um, one of the biggest uh, breakthroughs in car safety in the 20th century was from Volvo when they invented the modern seatbelt, which ended up saving a lot of lives. But because you are you are a tech man, and today is a, we're in a society surrounded by these kind of smart technologies. Yeah. One of the big safeties people have is about, uh, one of the big issues people have is about their data and how well, privacy. and their privacy and how yeah. well their stuff is protected. We always hear on the news about leaks mm -hmm. and, and customers and users losing yeah. the information to, yeah. to hackers or whatever. Yeah. So is this something that you have addressed with your, with your in car systems here? And what are you guys doing to make sure that the customers can be kind of like at ease when they're using these systems? Yeah, sure. Because uh, like smartphone maker, similar. So uh, for example, I told you that we will produce this car in Euro, and Euro also have very aggressive GPDR uh, regulatory. So our software already fully compliant um, GPDR already from software perspective. Also from hardware perspective, so also we develop a lot of hardware, you know, security, cybersecurity embedded. Yeah, so that's why I quite confident in this area. Of course, same, the same China, because the same platform, global. Yeah, because the GD is a global OEM, you know. We have to fulfill every market, the privacy and data regulatory. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to listen to music? Uh, yeah, it's a bit quiet here. Why don't we have some uh, song? Why don't we put some music on? Who do you want to listen to? You can just call machine, so wh uh, whoever you want from sing your, your favorite singer, maybe. Shall I have a try? Shall I have a try speaking to the, uh, to the system? Sure, let's go, yeah. Hi, Linka. What's that? Wo Shang Ting, uh, Michael Jackson, the Ge. Is my pronunciation good enough? Let's go. Great. Yeah. My Chinese yeah. has been accepted by a machine. I'm very happy with that. No problem. Your Chinese is very good. <laughs> you have Michael, Michael Jackson. So we, we won't be able to play this music, but we are listening to uh, a very famous artist's uh, song. with an in-car system uh, people have their cars for a longer time than they have their phones so the um, so they uh, 
the hardware yeah. needs to last uh, much longer, right? Yeah. It needs to be able to last but, but know, actually, several generations of yeah, smartphone. But, but, but actually, iPhone, right now, iOS 13, still can support iPhone 5, right? So hardware, of course, will be, have some limitation, but software, you still can adapt different hardware platform. You have to do that. Okay. Yeah. So if I come back to this car in a year's time, then the, I turn on the, the device here, then everything will look completely different. It will have been changed, the, soft, the uh, interface and the, yeah. the software. Yeah. yeah, we will do that. So the, the, the software, HMI, and also some color, uh, scene, uh, you can customize it. Yeah. So let's list out some of the features, like some of the functions that the software currently has. So there's obviously the, the car functions like the, the temperature settings and the music and stuff. And we were even able to uh, go online and book a hotel, buy flight tickets, buy train tickets. How much, how, how much further is this going to be? I think you mentioned about being able to, you know, even so much as being able to order food or you're driving home so that when you arrive at your door your food is there waiting for you yeah so that's why i call you i told you that's assistant if you have assistant just let him help you to to finish the job you're asking to do for example if you want to booking restaurant you just call machine hey i want to booking dinner today with my wife and 8 p.m please uh, my favorite restaurant you know that so, so, and this machine will call this restaurant automatically after you're saying, and then we're booking finish. So that, that's what we are designing right now. Yeah, we'll be have a very soon, I think. Because you have assistant, just tell assistant what you want. That's it. We have to make car intelligent enough, including future autonomous driving. So we can make person easy to use and ride car. So that's, uh, that's our vision, yeah, that's okay. future. So yeah. the, the, the end goal is for, the, is for no driver experience, actually. It's for a passenger experience. Depends. For example, like Tesla is doing that autopilot that make driver easy, right? But you still drive a car, but it's more interesting and more fun and easy, yeah. Sure, and safer, more important. Yeah, more right. safer, of course. Okay, uh, to you, thank you very much for talking to us today. You've really enlightened us on this topic. Yeah, I'm very glad to you enjoy our system in the car, so. Sure, well, we're here at your destination um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Yeah, see you next time. Okay. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good Have day. a good one.